Tonight on Newslink Indiana, Muncie reacts to the deadliest shooting in modern U.S. history. We'll tell you what students have to say just days after the Las Vegas massacre. Well, those looking to get food at a restaurant along Madison Street in Muncie tonight are likely changing their plans. How a boil warning affected more than 15 businesses. Rain is on the way. I'll have more coming up in just a few moments. From Ball State Unified Media, this is Newslink Indiana. And good evening. Welcome to Newslink Indiana. I'm Tanner Holbrook. And I'm Bri Eisen. Thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight, a water boil warning is in effect in Muncie along Madison Street from East Memorial Drive to 21st Street. That's right. Three water main breaks forced restaurants in that area to close for most of the day. Newslink Indiana's Tony Sandleben is live at Madison Street with more on how this could affect you. Tony. Well, if you're looking for a late night snack or a really late dinner in this area, you're probably changing your plans. You can see behind me here, crews are starting to clean up from construction of three water main breaks that occurred here earlier this morning. One worker came up to me and said that a cause of these is usually some kind of wear down in the pipe system, but we don't know the cause of today's water main breaks. Now, Indiana American Water did say that they turned the water back on. However, some Burger King employees said they don't have the water on back yet. That announcement was about 30 minutes ago. Now, keep in mind, businesses close at about uh, 9 o'clock this morning. Those restaurants did, rather. They've been closed. Places like Burger King, Taco Bell, KFC, and Arby's have all been closed since about 9 o'clock this morning due to possible contamination of their water supplies. McDonald's and rallies on Madison Street, they are still open. They are not in the affected area. But as for those restaurants that did close, here's some things to point out that they have to do in preparation for tomorrow. One employee told me that they went and bought 12 35 packs of bottled water water, 22 liter bottles of Coca-Cola, 10 2 liter bottles of Diet Coke, and spent about $150 just to prepare for tomorrow's day of business because all of the liquid they have in the restaurant right now is possibly contaminated because of these water main breaks. Now, all of these businesses are planning to reopen tomorrow night, but they will remain closed so that they can clean up and get prepared for business as normal tomorrow morning. Live in Muncie, Tony Sandlaben, Newslink, Indiana. All right, thank you, Tony. Stores in the area, including CVS and Walgreens, did remain open today. However, they were forced to shut down their restrooms due to the possibility of contaminated water. Ball State President Jeffrey Mearns is responding today on how the university will handle sexual assault. This comes after five sexual assaults that were reported on, on or near campus in the past month. Mearns says Ball State will offer support to the victims in any way. He also made it clear that the university will continue to investigate complaints. Mearns said they will do this by using the guidelines put in place by the Obama administration. This means the university will not withstand the Department of Education's recent decision to rescind those guidelines. An update on the situation in Vegas. More than 50 people are still in critical condition today after a sniper opened fire on an outdoor concert Sunday night. Now the company that owns the Mandalay Bay Casino and Resort is searching out to victims. MGM Resorts International says that they will be donating $3 million to help victims of the shooting. The company says they, will hope, they hope the donation will, quote, make a difference to those who are harmed and left behind. As of this afternoon, 59 people are still dead and more than 500 people were injured in what is now being called the largest mass shooting in U.S. history. And the effects of this mass shooting were felt all across the country, including here at home. The University Police Department has regulations to help ease everyone's mind. Newslink Indiana's Reagan Geiger has more. Sadness falls over the U.S. Tuesday, October 3rd, just two days after the largest mass shooting event in U.S. history took place. Sunday, October 1st, retiree Stephen Paddock opened fire at a Route 91 music festival, killing at least 59 and injuring more than 500 people. I think that the recent tragedies involving gun violence around the country and especially Las Vegas have been really really sad to hear about. Ball State University Police Department keeps students and faculty informed about what they can do to be safe in the event of a shooting. It's for the Ball State community so students, faculty, staff can participate in it. We call it the CRACE training, civilian response to active shooter events and we've taught about 4,000 people right now in that program. We started in the spring of 17 and the program teaches people how to respond in active shooter emergencies. It's three basic concepts, avoid, deny, defend. It's similar to some of the programs that people had with Run, Hide, Fight, or Alice training that they may be familiar with. And it's really situational awareness, and it teaches people 
uh, a skill set so that they can be safe in those type of events. So in an emergency, certainly people can call 911. Uh, they can call us direct at 765-285-1111. Uh, and we ask that people call us if they see something, that concept of see something, say something. See something, say something indeed. And these numbers once again are 911 for police and 765-285-1111 for direct contact to University Police. In Muncie, Reagan Geiger, Newslink, Indiana. The Ball State Police work diligently around the clock to ensure your safety, so please do not hesitate to call them if needed. President Trump is set to visit the victims in Las Vegas tomorrow. He spent today in San Juan visiting the people of Puerto Rico. Trump and the First Lady met with people whose homes were ruined as a result of Hurricane Maria. He also met with first responders and local officials during his visit. Residents say they hope the visit will bring attention to their great need for more aid. And new within the last hour, the governor of Puerto Rico says the death toll account for Hurricane Maria has now climbed to 34. After Hurricane Harvey hit Texas, groups from all over the country sent aid to those affected. One group from right here in Muncie made the trip. The Ann Vets of Indiana have been collecting supplies from all over the states for months, making sure to get things like toilet paper, water bottles, and even dog food. They drove to Texas last night and are making another trip tonight to help the community. Zambets don't help veterans, we help our community also. People come out of the walls. The Muncie Fire Department just dropped off 10 skids. So, and the rest of the state of Indiana probably have another 20, 30 skids. We'll probably be making two trips. To the Indiana Amvets say they want to help those affected in Florida and Puerto Rico, but need help getting a truck to get the supplies down there. If you want to learn more about how you can help out, you can call 765-287-9054. Bring, switching gears to weather, high temps today. I'm ready for sweater weather. How about you? I'm not really complaining about the 80 degree temps in I October, am. but I, I know am. that cold weather is coming soon. Yeah, 67. So. Do you like that, Molly? I do like that. Although temperatures were really warm today, we are very still a little bit warm right now across hometown currents, 80 degrees in Anderson and even Newcastle as well, you're at 80 degrees. But even Richmond, you guys are starting to slow a little bit down into the lower 70s. Now radar right now, overall Muncie, you are dry, but you can start to see a line of showers begin to develop. And that is due to a cold front that is pushing its way through. Coming up, I will track when you you can expect to see some rain and for the next few days rain chances are going to increase as well and even into the weekend we have a 40 percent chance for thursday friday it starts to go up at 60 percent and even 70 for saturday so coming up in my full forecast i'll track hour by hour on when you can expect to see some rain all right looking forward to it molly ahead on news link new exhibits at ball state's art museum are attracting some special visitors we'll tell you how they're learning about art and science in a brand new way Plus, find out who came to campus to tell her amazing story about the American dream. Stay with us. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. 
That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. Ball State has developed a way for children in the area to better understand culture and art. Yeah, Bree, that's right. NewsLink Indiana's Alex Kilmer has the story. The David Owsley Museum of Art on Ball State's campus has shared history for over 40 years, but they hope to more frequently share that experience with the children of the Muncie community. Well, it's a sad fact that in many states, as soon as the budget cuts start to hit, the first thing they do is cut the arts and humanities. And so one of the things we decided to do is start to pick up some of that slack at the museum by designing programs that fits in perfectly with the Indiana State curriculum. That is why they designed School Museum Art Readiness Tours, or SMART, to expand learning beyond the classroom. The SMART tour for the David Owsley Museum of Art is a way of partnering with the community and assuring that every student in the Muncie Community School System has an opportunity to visit the art museum or any art museum at least once in their academic career. And in many cases, this is the first time these students have ever been to an art museum. And hopefully we can instill the habit of going to visit art museums and other cultural resources throughout their lifetimes. The museum was given a $5,000 grant from the Ball Brothers Foundation for the program. And the future of the program depends on such donations. It's a matter of funding, as always. So we'd like to apply for more funding. We like to work in partnership with the Muncie Community Schools to pay for different portions of the cost for these field trips. But I think they're well worth it. But the children are just the beginning of a better informed community. I like them to go home and tell their parents that Ball State University is open to the public, to them. There's cultural resources here on the campus that are free, that everyone in the community can enjoy. This art museum, this collection, this campus, this community, it's theirs, it's ours, it's all of ours. In Muncie, Alex Kilmer, NewsLink, Indiana. There are more school visits scheduled for the coming weeks. The museum hopes that the program can continue for years to come. And Bree, while visiting the museum today, those students had a chance to experience a new exhibit that opened recently. And News Like Indiana actually had a preview of Emerging Technology 2, Art and Science. The new exhibit focuses on traditional relationships between how art and science interact. It features many different aspects from the STEM field, including an, ex an exhibit that focuses on the creation of water. Dimitri Gerflin was part of the pair who designed this piece, and Gerflin explains how the piece works. Um, it's a sort of a hydrogen observatory, and it also um, has to do with the origins of life, because we get to see water being split into its uh, constituents. The David Osley Museum of Art is opening a second new exhibit as well. This one features the relationship between art and sports, and the museum is free and open seven days a week. CNBC contributor Julissa Ark spoke at the Ball State on Monday night to share her story of living the American dream. Yeah, that's right. After coming to the United States on a visa, she found out that visa had actually expired when she was 14, leaving her undocumented. Even while being an undocumented citizen, she had a successful career on Wall Street and had an American dream. When she married in 2014, she officially became a United States citizen. She shares her story of perseverance with others. I think, it's, I think it's really important for people to hear my story um, because a lot of times we come to conclusions about undocumented immigrants without ever having met an undocumented immigrant and without really understanding the reasons why we come here. Um, so that's why I think it's important for people to hear. It's a different perspective than what they might be used to hear. Now, Julissa recently wrote a book called My Underground American Dream, where she talks about her life story. She says she hopes other immigrants have a happy ending like she did. All right, Molly, what is coming up in full weather? Well, we are seeing above average temperatures for today. We reached a high of 86 degrees. Coming up in my full forecast, I'll let you know if those above average temperatures will be sticking around. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. 
And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Emergency plan today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Welcome back to Newsweek Indiana. Now, Tanner and Molly, I like the 80 degree weather in October. Yes, <laughs> I do too. But although we were 80 today, we're not going to be seeing 80 degree temperatures for the next few days as we will be in the middle to upper 70s. For today, though, we were a high of 86 degrees. Now, keep in mind, this is well above average. Average high for this time of year is right around 70 degrees, so we were well past that. Current tem or highs today across the map of Indiana. You can see that 86 was a hot spot in Muncie, 84 in Indianapolis, and down in Shelbyville, 85 degrees. Those above average temperatures were all across Indiana. Currently, though, we are getting down into the middle to lower 70s. We are at 77 degrees right now, although those winds are very calm outside and they will stay calm for the remainder of the night as we head into tonight. We will have a low of 65 degrees with those mostly cloudy conditions as we are gearing up for rain that will come into play for tomorrow. So for tomorrow, as you're heading out the door for class, be sure to grab a light jacket. We will have mostly cloudy skies with a high of 75 degrees with those thunderstorms and this is what you want to take with you for tomorrow if you are heading to class you want to take a light jacket rain boots and your umbrella for when you do get caught up in those rain showers so let's time it out on when you can expect to see hour by hour on the rain so this is going to be 10 a.m. your walk to class overall Starting off with mostly cloudy conditions as that cold front begins to push its way through, we have rain showers that will begin to develop and even into Wednesday around 1 o'clock p.m. your lunchtime hours. As you're heading out to the door to grab some lunch, still some mostly cloudy skies. We will take a little break from the rain, but it will start right back up right around 6 o'clock p.m. as you start to see that next round begin to push its way through. By Thursday night, things should start to clear out just a little bit as we are expecting rain for the next few few days and even into the weekend. So if you are wanting to go to the pumpkin patch, Saturday is going to be not the day to do so as we will have a high of 77 degrees with mostly cloudy conditions and those thunderstorms that we just talked about as that next frontal boundary begins to push through. For Sunday though, beautiful day to go out and enjoy the fall festivities. We will have a high of 78 degrees, so it's going to be very nice. Your seven day forecast looks a little bit like this. For Friday and Saturday, still those chances for some showers and thunderstorms, but it begins to clear right back out with highs in the middle to upper 70s for Monday and Tuesday with partly cloudy conditions. All right, well, thank you, Molly. Hey, Andrew, what do we have coming up in sports? Well, the end of high school volleyball regular season is fast approaching, and top teams in the area are preparing for the tournament, so we've got highlights. Also, find out which marquee matchup is coming up later on in the week. Stay tuned. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts. 
real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Andrew Sanders with sports. The Yorktown girls volleyball team will be in action this Thursday at New Newcastle. The Tigers have had quite the season, ranking number one in the state of Indiana and number nine nationally. With a team consisting of mostly juniors and younger, the peak of this team is yet to come. Coach Bloom knows that this game won't be easy, especially without senior captain Bella Rosenthal. But with the adjustments that have been made, she feels that her kids will respond. Playing Newcastle is going to be a challenge. Um, this will be for the conference championship. Um, so we're going to have our work cut out for us. They're a good ball club. Um, and with an added challenge of our setter getting hurt, and so our setter is going to be out, and so we're going to have to shift some things and, and make some changes in our lineup. And so, you know, we'll see. I think that we have kids that can respond and can step up to that challenge, and, and I hope that we're able to. Another key to Yorktown's success this season is junior Kenzie Knuckles' leadership on the court. Knuckles not only takes charge in between the lines, but also leads the offense in kills with 437. We're a defensive team, so going against big teams has like been a struggle for us, but I think this season's been pretty well. I think that it's going to be a tough game, and I think both of us are going to work very hard, but I think at the end it's going to come down to defense wins. Actually, our coach already had a talk with us, basically telling us that we need a step it up and not just sometimes but all the time now and we need to learn that like people are counting on us to be a leader and that's what we need to do. The top ranked Tigers are up against the ninth ranked Newcastle Trojans this Thursday. Newcastle is 25 Newcastle is 25 and 6 coming into their game tonight riding a three game win streak. Each team is looking to shore up their weak spots in preparation for the start of the state tourney next week. But first the Trojans had to focus on tonight's game against Franklin Central. Newcastle is led by sisters Melanie and Mabry Shaftmaster. Now, sophomore Melanie is already verbally committed to the University of Minnesota and has combined with her younger sister to lead the team in service aces this season. The Shaftmaster sisters are also responsible for more than half of the team's total kills. Their game Thursday against number one Yorktown will be their last chance to lock in before the start of the tourney. Keeping up with high school volleyball, we have a game going on right here in our backyard between Muncie Central and Muncie Burris. The Owls host the Bearcats in the showdown in Middletown over at Ball Gym on Ball State's campus. Now the Bearcats came into the game at 6 and 17 and looked to clip the Owls at home. Here we see MJ Bryant serving to start the point for Central and Burris tries their best but their third hit was going to go right into the net giving the Bearcats the first point. Now Burris who came into the game at 23 and 10 start with a Chloe McGrew serve and the Bearcats would rally and send it right back at McGrew who sets to Garrett and gives Helen Beach a quick hit and Muncie Central tries to return but a net violation gives the Owls the point. The teams are still battling out in the final set over at Ball Gym. Now it might seem like a lot of volleyball you guys, but tourney time is right around the corner for these girls. Some of the best teams in the state are getting ready to show just what they can do. Very exciting for these girls coming up. Right. All right, cool Andrew, thank you so much. Hey, after the break we'll have a look at what is trending in the news right now.
Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. Time for one of my favorite segments, Trending Now. Mm -hmm. We have Katie McLaughlin here. Now, Katie, what's going on in entertainment news? Yes, so today is the day that the fans of the classic movie Mean Girls are paying tribute to their favorite day of the year. On October 3rd, 13 years ago, I'm sure we can all remember Aaron Samuels asking Katie Heron what day it is in math class. On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. It's October 3rd. Two weeks later, we Fans have been taking to social media all day to rave about their traditions. Many are still trying to make fetch happen, while others, like Lindsay Lohan herself, are simply re-watching their favorite movie. She posted a few days ago on Instagram of the movie, of the movie From a Scene. Okay, I'd have to say Mean Girls is one of my favorite movies. Like, I can seriously quote the whole movie. I mean, guys, besides <laughs> bits and true. pieces on TV, I haven't seen the full movie. Yeah. Tanner, are you never serious? Seen yeah, I've never seen the full movie. That is so not Isn't that fetch. crazy? <laughs> that is so not fetch. That's so not fetch. Don't know even, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <sighs> so another trending topic is the hashtag National Boyfriends Day. It is currently taking over all social media. If you have been on Twitter, I can guarantee that you have seen pictures of couples flooding your timeline. Girlfriends everywhere are posting pics of their bae to show appreciation, while others are posting humorous tweets to cope with the fact that they are currently bae-less. I've actually seen a lot of posts today. I've seen just a few. Just a few just on a Instagram, few? just a few on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Twitter. I got on today, and it was like every single picture was of the National Boyfriend's In Day. In Instagram. Did you see, the, did you see oh. that tweet there? It said that she's just excited for Halloween. Halloween. She's just yes, over it. Yes, I can relate to that. So, yes. <laughs> I'm excited for Halloween, too, though. I mean, who is it? I know. And it's finally October. So. Oh, I know. Well, Aunt Molly, did you post a picture for National Boyfriend Day today? I did not. You did it? How <laughs> no. about you? No. No, you did it? I Sorry. actually forgot. Bob's <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much, Katie. Let's yeah. take a look at weather. Yeah, so coming up, we have some showers that will be moving through for Wednesday and even to parts of Thursday and into Friday. So keep your rain gear here handy. If you are going to class, you will need it. Highs will stay in the upper to middle 70s, but they will clear out for Sunday, leaving beautiful conditions with a high of 78 degrees. Beautiful skies to so go out and enjoy some fall festivities. And for Monday and Tuesdays, high in the middle to upper 70s with partly cloudy conditions. You know, we're, we're returning to these 78 
highs. Like, th isn't that crazy? Yes. I feel like we should be down in the 60s. I feel like so I don't too. think so. Oh, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to break out my sweater. I know, me too. I'm, I'm, I've had all of the hot that I can take. I'm ready to strip and put the sweatshirt back on. Very, very true. <laughs> all right, well, that's all tonight for News Like Indiana. Be sure to watch us tomorrow night right here at 9 p.m. on Cardinal Vision or on BallStateDaily.com. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a good night. You've been watching News Link Indiana in high definition.